Listen, listen, Drew. Oh, Frankie, where are your sunglasses? Brother to brother, I wanted to look you in the eyes. I need to apologize. Okay, what for? I've been riffing on you a lot for using cheaper hardware and not the best technology and being too poor and ugly and I just want you to know that I still appreciate you despite you having substantially, like way, way less money than I do. I still respect you as a brother. Well, thank you, Frankie. I appreciate that. You know, we may not always want the same technology, but at least you're still using an iPhone, right? <laughs> yeah, I am. What is that? Well, I was just noticing that the resale value for these phones kind of dropped pretty fast. You can actually get pretty cheap pixels now. Oh my god! I believe it's been over two years, maybe three years now, since I've actually reviewed or even purchased, you know, an Android phone of some kind. And it's because I felt like I had reviewed pretty much everything. I reviewed the foldables, I reviewed the flagships, the mid-range phones, the budget phones, and the reactions were pretty mixed, but I feel like as we're trying to kill time as we get closer to Dub Dub, it would be only fair as I've now started talking a lot more on this channel about the secondhand market and buying iPhones used or buying them refurbished and seeing what kinds of discounts Accounts you can get through eBay or Amazon. A lot of you wisefully brought up, well, if you're gonna talk about getting iPhones for cheap, you should also talk about getting some Androids for cheap. So, sorry if you were hoping this would be like another excuse to rant on Pixels. No, I need like a bad hardware product to justify a rant. And Pixel hardware in more recent history has honestly gotten pretty freaking good. And I got this Pixel 6a like a week ago now, but I was still reviewing the iPhone SE 2. And no, I don't believe this is gonna be a a permanent switch for me. I'm just wanting to exercise, you know, my willingness and my ability to step outside of the walled garden, which I've always said everything outside the walled garden is a desolate prickly wasteland, but outside the walled garden now, especially with things like the Pixel tablet, which I haven't been able to check out yet, but outside of the walled garden, I think I'm seeing a little bit of, you know, cacti out there. There's a little prickly pear cactus outside, and sure it's sharp and it's not as nice as what's inside the walled garden, but there's some little sweet fruit on there and you gotta cut off the spikes a little bit so it doesn't hurt you but there's something juicy out there it's not convincing me to completely leave the walled garden don't worry i'm still gonna be your apple sheep at heart and i still miss my iphone a lot but i think the android offerings are getting a little bit more compelling at least especially when these days smartphones are all starting to blur together it's all just full screen glass rectangles and because there's less and less year over year differences these days i think now is the perfect time to start taking advantage of the insane speed at which Android phones lose their resale value, right? That's one of the reasons you should not buy a Pixel new because you don't have to wait very long for it to suddenly get like 60% or 70% cheaper, which is why I was able to buy this Pixel 6a off of Amazon Renewed, which means it has a 90 day return policy, six times greater than that of Apple or Google's return policy. And it was in great condition, to be honest. Like it didn't come in the original packaging, but something I found funny is that it did ship with a charging brick. Some Samsung one probably isn't the fastest or best charging brick in the world, but if you bought the Pixel 6a for $350 from Google, that doesn't come with a charge brick. Buy it for $218 on Amazon, now nah, you get the charge brick. This is how the world works. But it was in great condition. There was just a little bit of, like, smudges on the side, but literally wiped off with my finger. Not a big deal at all. And for $200, this is a phone with 5 5G, USB-C fast charging, a 6.1 inch OLED display, a great camera system, and 128 gigs of storage, which still to this day, even the $450 iPhone SE 3 still ships with 64 gigs of storage. So at least on paper, this thing looks a lot, lot better than buying a cheaper iPhone. If you're willing to step outside of the Apple ecosystem, I know many of you aren't. I'm in that same boat as well. But what's crazy is I've learned from channel members like Michael Burkhart that if you're willing to go on eBay refurbished, which may not necessarily have as good a return policy and maybe the condition of the phone could be more questionable if you're willing to downgrade it to the good tier instead of the excellent condition that I paid for, which this thing basically looks brand new other than the fact that I didn't peel plastic off of it when I took it out of the box, but still, the condition of it is great, but he was able to find the larger and superior Pixel 6, you know, not the A version, for under $200. You get a bigger phone with this with a better camera 
cam. I like that 50 megapixel crap. And it goes up to 90 hertz. And unlike the 6A, the Pixel 6 will actually get wireless charging. That's one thing that I'm kind of bummed out about not having on the Pixel 6A. It's crazy to me that Google sent me the Pixel stand all those years ago. And five years later, there are still Pixel phones that do not have wireless charging. Come on, this should be standard by now. Thankfully, they did add it on the Pixel 7a, but that's brand new, so you're gonna pay quite a bit of premium for that wireless charging. In my opinion, I think you're far better off just buying a Pixel 6 for the low $200 in the refurbished and secondhand market. It's just amazing to me that you can get phones with this decent of a hardware system. You know, this one has 4,400 milliamp hour battery, and if you're willing to go up to Pixel 6 Pro, that has like a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. And yes, it's true that the first generation Google Tensor chip is not that efficient, but the nice trade-off of having Google Silicon powering these phones is that Google promises a lot more software support for them, which I know a lot of you have expressed that's important to. Obviously, you can find even cheaper phones for like a hundred bucks or lower if you're willing to not get that many years of support. But this phone basically just turned a year old and Google is promising five years of software support, which means even if you're like me and you just spent 200 bucks on a phone like this, you'll probably still get security updates and software patches for another four years down the road, which is hard to complain about when you're only spending 200 bucks on a phone. So this is more and more of a cost-saving option in the market that I just think can't be ignored anymore. And because I use so many Google services on my Apple hardware, I felt like the Pixel deserved a second chance at redemption, basically. Like, it was still super impressive to me that, for one, I unboxed this phone and it was not, like, completely factory reset. Like, within less than a minute of just turning this phone on, it immediately jumped to the home screen and it was just like, okay, I'm ready to go, you know? It didn't do the whole Google boot up process and say, okay, give me your email and give me this information and that information connect to the internet. No, it just jumped straight to the home screen and was like, yep, I'm ready to go. You can sign in if you want or whatever. But once I did sign in, you know, I use YouTube Premium for both YouTube music and of course watching YouTube, which I watch more than any other site. I have Creator Studio on here for managing my channels. I've got Gmail and Google Photos, which I also use and Google Sheets for tracking all of our expenses. So there's just so much of my life already managed by Google, I was like, why not just let them have the hardware as well and see how well it goes. And I'll do future videos talking about the long-term ownership of this and some of the troubles I had trying to get my SIM moved over. I'll admit I'm getting to the point now where the hardware is fairly compelling, but Apple is fighting me a bit, you know? I have found decent workarounds for iMessage. That's not a big deal for me. I don't even really care that much about missing out on AirDrop because there's third-party options that have gotten really good recently, like near drop on my Mac, and more things I'll talk about in future videos, but by far the hardest part of switching to an Android phone for me now is the wallet app on my phone. Now that that holds my main credit card and I can't add the Apple card to this phone, and I have my Apple card savings account on there, yeah, basically your only option is managing it through the iPad, which I wasn't really using my iPad much these days anyway, and I'm debating switching to the Pixel tablet, so I don't really see that as a long-term solution, and you can't access half the stuff you need for your Apple Card on the web. Basically, it just gives you an option to pay it off, but there's no transaction history, there's no savings account data. It's really quite difficult to replicate all of that service onto Android. Everything else I can kind of figure out a workaround for, but the main thing I just want people to be aware of is how quickly Pixels lose their resale value, because I see a lot of people running out and buying new Pixels these days, spending $500, $600, $700, whereas you just wait a couple months basically. You can find these things for like 200 bucks. Like for under $300, that's got 120 hertz, that's got a 6.7 inch display, and it's still gonna get the four years of software support. So imagine how cheap a Pixel Fold is gonna be in like a year. I could be wrong on this, but my personal prediction is that within a year, you'll be able to buy a Pixel Fold for under $1,000 if you go Amazon Renewed or eBay Refurbished. I already tested eBay Refurbished in previous videos. I haven't tried out Amazon Renewed before, but so far, I'm pretty impressed with the quality, except I can't tell you the battery health because pixels don't bake that into the settings. It's actually really hard to figure out what the battery health is on these phones. It's shipped with Android 12 though, which tells me this was probably in a box sitting around for a long time, but when phones depreciate this fast, you cannot ignore the value of the secondhand market. These phones are really nice hardware for the money, and I'm gonna give Android a second chance in 2023 and see what I like and what I don't like and how well it collaborates with my Mac book, which I'm not switching away from. I've looked outside the macOS world and seen nothing but barren, dusty old crops. So, sorry, Windows.
Windows. Let me know if there's any other Android things you'd like to get my perspective on while I've got this phone in hand. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. It seriously helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. This is your Apple Sheep here, for some reason, and I'll see you in the next one.